With inflation impacting the economy and forcing the Fed to raise interest rates, parking your cash in the right place is extremely important, and if you're not taking advantage of this, then your money is losing value every day. And although inflation is now on the downturn and the Fed is potentially closing in on its final interest rate hikes, there is still opportunity for your cash to earn 5 and even 6% of a return. Which, if you're not achieving that right now, then this video is for you. Now, I've recently created a poll asking the subscribers of this channel where they have their cash sitting, and the second highest result was a traditional savings account. This is an issue because traditional savings accounts earn nearly no interest at all, especially compared to the options I'm going to be covering in this video. With that, be aware that these are not investments that you're going to build long-term wealth from, but more so an opportunity to park your cash in for the short term. Let's say you're saving to buy a car or have an emergency fund, or even are planning to put in a down payment for a house in the near future. This video will guide you in the right direction to improving your own personal finances. And all it takes is a little bit of energy to hit that like and subscribe button with notifications on to be alert for future content I create like this. With that being said, let's start off with a high yield savings account. Currently, the average savings account in the US has a 0.4% annual return, but there are some banks that offer much higher rates and some with much lower. For example, if you have cash sitting in a traditional savings account, some of the big banks are literally giving out returns that you wouldn't even notice the difference, like one hundredth of a percent with Chase. So if you're currently using a traditional savings account, you need to consider opening up a high yield savings account because they can get your returns between four and 5% and in some cases even higher than that. A high yield savings account is great for short term cash positions like say you're doing this with an emergency fund because you are still able to earn interest while having instant access to the cash when needed. And for those curious, an emergency fund should consist of three to six months of living expenses and is something that everyone should work on having. Why? Because a study found that 68% of Americans couldn't even cover their living expenses for a month if they lost their job. Now let me show you how significant of a difference this could be if you decide to make the change. If you had $10,000 sitting with, for example, Chase that earns a hundredth of a percent of an annual return in a traditional savings account, that means that your $10,000 investment would now have earned you a full dollar after a full year of time. Great ROI, right? Whereas if you were to place that $10,000 of cash into a high yield savings account like a CIT bank that earns 4.85%, then you would have earned $485 after a year. That's much better, and there's no significant difference between the two. Now, a high yield savings account is FDIC insured up to $250,000, which you should always read through and check before signing up. And for those curious, FDIC stands for the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which is a government agency that was created during the Great Depression to build trust, stability, and confidence in the banking system. In short, when something is FDIC insured, it means that the government will protect your money in the case of something like a bank failure or theft. And to be exact, the FDIC website states that the insurance amount is up to $250,000 per person per insured bank for each account ownership category. If you're interested to learn more about that, I'll leave a link in the description below. And another pro to a high yield savings account is that your cash is extremely liquid. This means that you have quick access to your cash whenever you need. And because they are FDIC insured, they are backed by the government, and the only risk is if the government defaults. But something important to know is that the rates can change at any moment depending on current market conditions. Which, when you are opening a high yield savings account, it should show you in fine print how exactly they calculate and pay out the interest to you. And for the majority of the times, this is how it works. The account will automatically apply a daily interest rate for the balance that you have in the account at the end of each day. This means that the interest you earn is compounded daily, but you're not going to see that because the actual interest payments you get in your account are going to be paid out monthly. So although these are not a guaranteed fixed rate and the rates could change at any given moment, the positive side is that you still have instant access to your cash when needed, and you can still earn interest that is much better than a traditional savings account. And something to be aware of is that some of these accounts, you have to have a minimum amount in the account in order to earn the interest. For example, CIT Bank has a minimum $5,000 required, and if you are below that, your earnings drop from 4.85% to 25 basis points. I'm gonna discuss at the end of this video different examples on how you can best utilize each option that I'm discussing in this video. With that being said, an additional option for you that is extremely liquid is a money market fund. Money market funds are blowing up and have recently hit a record high in total assets, but what is a money market fund? A money market fund is a type of mutual fund that invests into short-term instruments like US treasuries, CDs, 
or other debt securities that are issued by the government, corporations, or financial institutions. And in more simple terms, a money market fund is a low risk option for you to park your cash while earning interest and maintaining easy access. And if you've ever heard of a money market account, this is something that is completely different and you can only have a money market fund through a brokerage firm. For example, Fidelity has a money market fund called SPACs that is currently yielding an annual 4.74% and to clarify, that yield includes all expenses like the 0.42% expense ratio shown. And you can see it is listed as a seven day yield, but that is the annual rate you would achieve, not what you receive after seven days. And with money market funds, the interest you earn is based on the amount you own each day and is generally paid out monthly. Now the reason for its high yield is because of current market conditions. And as you can see in previous times, the yield on this money market fund was nearly 0%. Something to be aware of with money market funds is that they are considered investments and not savings. So they are not FDIC insured, nor are they guaranteed to make you any money. This is why you should not view a money market fund in the long-term approach to building wealth. But the key reasons for a money market fund is that you either sold stock or deposited money into the account where you can reap interest while getting ready for your next investment purchase. And because money market funds have a range of investments that include debt securities that are short in maturity and high in credit quality, they are perceived as low risk. With a money market fund, you can place your money into them whenever you want, or a convenient option that brokerages like Vanguard and Fidelity offer is making a money market fund your core position. This is where all the uninvested cash is held, and think of these core positions as the central hub for all of your account transactions. This means that any of the cash that is not invested in securities is automatically placed into your core position, and for this case is a money market fund that yields a return while you park your cash for your next investment. This is extremely convenient because if you want to buy securities, it will pull directly from your money market fund and vice versa when you're selling securities, it will act as a normal cash position, but it's in the sense of a money market fund that can yield some return instead of just cash sitting in the account. Now there are three main types that consist of government, prime, and municipal money market funds. For example, I currently have a government money market fund called SPACs as my core position on Fidelity. I personally wish that every investment account had this because it's so simple, easy, and yet beneficial, especially in times like this. I bet some of you watching this don't have one and any uninvested cash is honestly relatively similar to a traditional savings account doing nothing. And with inflation being much higher than normal right now, earning nothing is like you're actually spending money but not getting anything for it. I'm planning to make my next video on money market funds, so if you are interested, let me know your thoughts in the comment section of this video and definitely subscribe with notifications on to be alert for that video. With that being said, I have just covered a high yield savings account and money market funds, which both do not guarantee a fixed return over a specific period of time, like the next two I'm gonna to discuss do, and the first one being treasury bills. Treasury bills are short-term debt securities that are issued by the US Treasury, and although they're not FDIC insured, they are backed by the US government, which is why the risk is considered to be pretty low. Now, treasury bills have maturities, and in my simple terms, that just means the lifespan of the investment. And the exact periods that you can choose from could be a four, eight, 13, 17, 26, or 52 week treasury bill. And for those curious, there are treasury notes which are longer term maturities between two and 10 years. And then there are treasury bonds that contain maturities between 20 and 30 years. But for the most benefit right now in the economy, I'm gonna be discussing treasury bills, which are short term and because of the recent rate hikes and risk of the debt ceiling crisis, their values are rising. Now, how exactly treasury bills work is you are basically giving the government a short term loan where they use your money to their best benefit. And because the maturities are so low, they pay you back the interest that you earn at the end of the maturity and they don't pay out any interest payments during that length of time. For example, if you purchase a $1,000 treasury bill with a 52 week maturity that yields 5%, that 5% is known as the discount rate. It's named that because you are going to discount that percentage from the initial 1,000, which is also known as the face value. So how it works is you would initially pay $950, and when the treasury bill matures, you will receive $1,000, and so that $50 difference is called the interest they pay you. Something to be aware of is that I used a 52 week period for simplicity because a 5% rate, that is at an annual rate. So if I got a four week treasury bill, I'm not gonna get 5% of growth after four weeks. When it comes to purchasing treasury bills, you can do this through the government's website called Treasury Direct or through a brokerage firm like Fidelity, which may make the process easier for you. Now treasury bills through Treasury Direct can be bought in increments of $100, where a brokerage firm like Fidelity is 1,000 which means the minimum you would need is $1,000. I've recently made an entire video covering how to buy treasury bills on Fidelity. If you are interested in that, I'll leave a link in the 
description below and a pop-up right here. But an advantage toward T-bills is that although you do have to pay federal taxes, you are exempt from state and local taxes. So if you're in a high-tax state, this option would be even better for you. And then a disadvantage toward treasury bills is that if you are going to try selling them, you're going to have to pay a fee on the sale. Now moving on, the craziest part about the economy right now is that the yield curve is inverted. This means that the yields you are getting on short-term bonds are actually giving out higher yields than the long-term, which typically long-term bonds are going to be giving out higher returns because investors demand higher yields for locking their money up for a longer length of time. But with that being said, treasury bills right now are extremely hot as the four-week treasury bills are yielding close to 6%. These options are for the short-term and are extremely attractive in my opinion, but there is still one more option that we have to consider that I'm about to discuss, and that is CDs. Now CDs stand for Certificates of Deposits and they are a savings product that offer you a guaranteed interest rate over a specific period of time that you can purchase through banks, credit unions, and even brokerage firms like Vanguard and Fidelity. The nice part about CDs is that for most cases, they are FDIC insured up to $250,000 per account you own them through. And CDs come in many different timeframes, but the most significant thing I noticed is that on Fidelity, after the one year period, CDs surpass treasury significantly. And what's even more outstanding is that there is a 10 year CD that has a fixed rate of nearly 5%. But a major drawback is that if you're going to have to withdraw early, you are going to be paying a fee. The penalty fees for CDs depend on the term length, but typically you are going to lose out on months of interest that you have earned if you withdraw early. And you can see right here from some of the more known banks like Chase, you can see that an early withdrawal of a one-year CD will cost you 180 days of interest. And on a five-year CD, that would be 365 days of interest. So I'd really try to avoid having to withdraw and definitely be aware of what you're getting yourself into before purchasing. But if you are worried about this and still want to get CDs, you can get some where you can withdraw penalty free. The only downside is that these CDs would generally pay less interest than standard CDs, which would make them closer to like a high yield savings account. Like CIT Bank that is giving out a 4.9% yield with no penalty to withdraw early, the only caveat is that you must deposit a minimum $1,000. But what's surprising and what you should remember for future reference is that when you look into CDs, you're going to get a higher return, more than likely, on a brokerage account like Fidelity instead of going through a traditional bank. As you can see right here are some of the major banks and what their CDs yield, and the highest of them all is a two-year through Capital One at 4.3% where Fidelity's two-year is up to 5.3%. Now, there are more options for you to search for. There might be one better than Capital One, but this is just what I noticed in the short period of research. And lastly, you do have to pay federal and state taxes with CDs, unlike you do with treasury bills. Now, I'm going to go through different scenarios on when it would be best to use each of the options. The first is that you are currently working to start an emergency fund that consists of three to six months of your potential living expenses. The account that would be most suitable for you is a high-yield savings account because you will still have high liquidity to withdraw whenever you want, you don't have to pay any fees to do so, and you are still going to earn much more interest than a traditional savings account. The second example is that you are investing and you believe the market is about to collapse. So you're going to pull out a sufficient amount of your stock, which I don't recommend doing. I think time in the market is the best approach. My own personal opinion, you can let me know yours in the comments. But if you were going to be doing this, you would ideally want a money market fund. You don't want cash just sitting and not earning anything, you would want an easy position, like a core position if you could with your own brokerage firm, that can earn you interest while you have it sit. It's way more convenient if the markets are bad, then interest rates might be up and you might be able to get a great yield, still easily accessible, and then when you're ready to put that into the market, you can just go ahead and purchase the stock. The third example, let's say, is that you have a large chunk of money that you are saving to have a down payment on a house in the near future. You want to guarantee that you're not going to lose any money on this, so I would recommend getting either a CD or a treasury bill. Now, you do have to look at the rates and which one might be preferable, but if you're in a state with high taxes, you might want to go with the treasury bill. Or if not, and you have a couple years until you believe you're going to achieve this, a CD may be better for you or you could take a ladder approach with treasury bills or CDs. And with that, all four locations discussed in this video to park your cash for the short term come at pretty low risk. And if you're someone that needs it to be FDIC insured, you could have a high yield savings account for instant access in the short term. But then you could also get a CD that could be more short to medium that is locked up. But on top of that, you could get treasury bills that are full faith and credit of the US government, and then money market funds where you can get a government money market fund to improve the safety in that aspect. And I know there's some of you out there that are thinking, why would I make a video on this? Because the differences aren't that big. But the truth is, is if you have a traditional savings account or even cash sitting and not earning you any interest at all, then that is a massive difference 
And if you want to build long-term wealth and continue to improve your personal finances, you need to understand that even a 1% difference is a huge factor on what you can achieve in the long run. And that is why this video was critical for me to make. With that being said, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notifications button for future Money Talk content like this. Thank you.